Everyone excited? Mm. Yes. I'd like to open the regular meeting of the Orion Township Planning Commission. It is Wednesday, October 19th. We're at the Orion Township Municipal Complex Boardroom at 2320 Joslin Road. Can I have a roll call, please? Reynolds? Here. Gross? Here. St. Henry? Here. Urbanowski? Here. Walker? Here. Bracken? Absent with notice. Gingell? Here. Do we have a quorum? Thank you very much. Uh, we do have a public hearing this evening at 7.05. Uh, we're a little ahead of the game, but for PC 22-35, Township Initiated te uh, Text Amendment to Zoning Ordinance 78, Article XXX, Section 30.09, Performance Guarantees. Um, at that proper time, we will switch over. We will uh, pause our regular meeting and open the public hearing, offer the public an opportunity to um, present any um, information. We'll have a brief overview of what is being presented. If we have any citizen letters, we will tally those, give the PC an opportunity to provide additional comments and questions, um, and then we'll close the public hearing and reconvene our regular meeting. Uh, with that said, we will continue forth with our regular agenda um, until 7.05. So with that said, we have our meeting minutes from uh, let's see, October 5th here. Um, do I have any discussion? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the meeting minutes as presented. A motion, motion and support. Any discussion? Mr. Walker? Any discussion? Seeing none, any public discussion on the motion? All those in favor, please state with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. <clears throat> Next up, we have our agenda review and approval. Any discussion? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I would move that we approve the agenda as submitted. Wonderful. Do I have, uh, <laughs> do I have support? Support. Eventually. <laughs> support by Mr. St. Henry. Further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, uh, any public discussion on the motion? All those in favor, please state with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. Uh, that leads us to item number five on our agenda this evening, which is brief public comment on non-agenda items only. If anyone from the public is here would like to make comment, seeing no one racing up to the podium, we'll move on to our consent agenda, and we have no items, uh, and that leads us to seven, our new business. We have no new business items this evening. We only have unfinished business, uh, which leads us to <clears throat> our topic in which we will be having a public hearing on. So we'll take a brief recess and uh, reconvene our meeting at 7.05.
point. Um, Tammy, would you like to give us a brief overview? Otherwise, I can. Either way. Um, I mean, there's not a lot to say. You have before you a text amendment to uh, the section of the ordinance that goes over performance guarantees, which are a guarantee we take in when a project comes in, is ready to start, um, to guarantee the, <laughs> the completion of the project. Um, prior to this text amendment, we accepted cash or an irrevocable letter of credit. Um, we've heard from over the years from a number of developers um, that many other communities accept a, a bond. And so we created a subcommittee at the joint um, annual meeting over a year ago. Um, and that subcommittee came up with the text in front of you, uh, pretty much written by the attorney. So it has been reviewed by the attorney. Um, and that is that, you know, there's a couple little tweaks here and there, but the main, the main change to it is that we would now accept a bond. Um, the difference, the major difference between accepting a bond and an irrevocable letter of credit is during the construction of the project, when major things are completed, you're able to get a reduction in your letter of credit or a refund on the amount of cash we're holding. If you use a bond, there is no reduction. That bond is kept in hand for the entire length of the project till everything is completed. Okay, thank you for that overview. And again, um, a handful of us, including myself, were on that committee. Um, it was comprised of uh, a number of citizens and fellow board members, and this was based on um, research we compiled from the region and developed similar language to that. So nothing you know, kind of out of the norm of what other municipalities offer uh, developers. All right, with that said, uh, I'd like to turn it over if there's anyone from the public who would like to make any public comment during the public hearing process. <clears throat> Seeing no one present in the room, <clears throat> do we have any citizen letters that we received? None. Okay, we have no citizen le letters to read into the record. Uh, any comment from PC members during the public hearing process? Seeing none. Uh, we will go ahead and close the public hearing at 707 and reconvene our regular meeting, which leads us to the same topic um, in, in front of us this evening. <clears throat> um, so there is a um, <clears throat> essentially a motion in front of us to recommend the board um, to move forward on the text amendment as you see here this evening. Uh, just a couple of, I guess, thoughts. You know, everything that you see here tonight was pretty well vetted and discussed over the last year, I'm pretty comfortable. And I think, um, if anything, this is a benefit to um, anyone proposing a project within the township. It, it, it gives them another opportunity to, to keep a project moving forward without tying up cash dollars or um, lines of credit. So it's something that we we heard from, from small and large projects throughout the township. So I'm in full support of this and um, look forward to having it as part of our uh, ordinance. Further discussion, questions, comments? Scott, I just have a question for you. Sorry, based on your experience, um, or maybe uh, Mr. Walker would, would have, or Mr. Gross would have uh, some input on this. How often do uh, developers typically use bonds as their preferred choice when they're uh, proposing a development? Um, well, currently, bonds are not allowable, right? Well, so we have well, zero. But, no, I know that, but right. I'm just saying in, based on projects outside of Orion Township. Yeah, I would probably say probably the three quarters or better than half will start to use the bond process. I mean, it's essentially the insurance policy against yep. our ask. So okay. um, it's going to be a popular take because it doesn't tie up as, you know, it's more of a, a, a fee ask from the developer versus them tying up cash dollars. So. And I'm assuming we're treating this kind of as a best practice that we, we've picked up from other uh, communities. Yeah, so without kind of divulging specific projects, right, we have, we've had small projects throughout the year of, of longtime resident, you know, business owners that had a small addition on their project that had to come up with, you know, tens of thousands of dollars, right, in a credit line or cash yep. um, that would potentially sideways their project for the time being or you know versus a bond which would be a fee amount that would cover our ask and cover our ask for uh, essentially the project to still be completed um so and and there's some verbiage in here that obviously still allows us to protect us and 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 still allow it so yeah thank you yep further questions comments no i'm just thank you for being thorough over the last year and doing this um 
and whoever else was on the committee as well. <clears throat> Welcome. All right. Well, with that said, if anyone's willing to make a motion, um, I'm willing to hear one, we can discuss it further. Um, Mr. Chairman, I move that the Planning Commission forwards a recommendation to the Township Board to approve and adopt PC 22. Dash 35 Township Initiated Text Amendment to Zoning Ordinance 78, Article XXX, Section 30.09, Performance Guarantees, um, for the following reasons that it took a year to do. You all researched it well, and this will be a good uh, best practice for us moving forward. Understood. Do I have a motion? Do I have support? Support. Support by Mrs. Gindel. Further discussion? Yeah, I would like to just reiterate, you know, this is this is a, um, a common practice. It's it's not a, a off the, the beaten path ask. So if anything, we're kind of just bringing ourselves up to date to similar communities around us. So anything else anyone would like to add? If not, I'll entertain a roll call vote, please. Angel? Yes. St. Henry? Yes. Romanowski? Yes. Walker? Yes. Gross? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, that leads us to item 8B of unfinished business on our agenda this evening, which is PC 21-65, Township Initiated Tax Amendment to Zoning Ordinance 78, uh, 2001 to 2002 Ordinance Updates. Um, Tammy, you want to take the lead from here? <clears throat> we obviously go through and do some buttoning up from time to time, and I believe that's this. We are buttoning. <clears throat> Um, some of these you've seen already. We started this PC project in 2021, um, and we got busy. And so working through the discussed changes didn't necessarily happen rapidly. Um, <laughs> so with a little bit of decline in the work, I thought we needed to get this wrapped up. Even if there's some things that we say, eh, still not 100% happy with, we could exclude that and go with what we have. So I wanted to present to you what we had discussed before with the tweaks. I'd given you the minutes in your packet in case you wanted to read what was discussed. In addition, there was a fence committee that was created at the same time as the performance guarantee committee. Um, and um, they want, the committee wants the attorney to make sure they're good with their language. But as long as we were already talking about other text amendments and the fact that even if you like this language, the attorney's got to review it, I went ahead and incorporated it. Um, so anything related to fences, even if you like it, if the attorney likes it, it's got to take a quick trip back to the committee to make sure that, that um, they're ready to sign off on it. So I, I had been instructed in the past whenever we're doing a text amendment this, this uh, elaborate to please give you a hard copy of everything we're discussing. So you do have in front of you in your yellow folder um, each of the sections we're talking about and only the pages that it has red lines for the changes. Um, it might have a page before if it was the <laughs> beginning of a section or a page after. Um, <clears throat> so we're just gonna go through section by section. Um, related to, we're talking about the definition of a lot double frontage. This came about related to fences. So on a double frontage lot, meaning you have a road in front and you have a road in back, the ordinance says, or had said, that um, you are held to a front setback for a structure off of both roads. This created a problem when people want to put in a six-foot fence in that if you want to put it, for instance, we have a number of homes that back to Walden in the Keatington sub. So their home is held to a front setback off of, I'll say Orbit, and I might have the wrong street, but you know where I'm talking. And... Um, then they would be held to a 35 foot or a 30 foot, whatever the front setback is from Walden. So if you want to put a six foot fence, you were having to come in all those 30 to 35 feet or go for a variance. So when we looked at it, all districts in single family residential have the same, have a, I'm sorry, have a, most of them have the same front setback as the, as the rear setback. And some of them have where the rear setback is more than the front setback. So this double frontage was really serving no purpose. If you're building a home, you're held to a front setback off of orbit. 
and you're held to a rear setback, Upper Walden, why bother talking about having two front setbacks just because you have two roads? It wasn't really accomplish anything, but it was hurting those people that want, because a detached accessory says that a detached accessory can be 10 feet from the rear. So this double front setback was hurting unnecessarily, the committee thought, um, those properties that had double frontage. So I know that was a lot of rambling. Hopefully you're following me on that. <laughs> um, so we had proposed that we're, we're changing that definition, um, that you don't have to have... Um, yeah, thank you. Yep. You get it? Okay, good. Yep. <laughs> Um, then we get into the definition definition of lot lines, and, and actually I stand a little bit corrected that the, the you have your definition of double frontage, and then when it gets into lot lines, you talk about your front lot line, and that's where it's talking about your front lot line is where you're in front of a road. However, if you're a double frontage, that's where you were held to having the front set back on both. Um, so this wordage is this verbiage is changed to um, incorporate fixing that issue. Again, I'm not going to read it. You've got it in your packet and looking for, uh, before we, when we finish up this Article 2, looking to um, have any discussions or whether you like the way that it is presented. Um, so the only other change in, in uh, Article 2 is we discussed this last time we talked about this in 2021, was that we use the definition um, of other communities used for mezzanine, and we had a problem with ours just having... Um, it was almost like a double negative how we stated it. So we fixed our definition to be similar to other communities. That was it in Article 2. Is there any constructive criticism, likes, dislikes, changes? In support of the changes as proposed. Everybody's good? Yep. Yes. And again, Maybe what I'll do with this when we get through all of these, I will be presenting it to the attorney. If the attorney's good with it, then I'll go ahead and, and set the public hearing for it. Okay, Good. Um, next section is um, section three. We, in our list of zoning districts, never had biz, and biz is not an overlay, biz is an actual district, so adding that. Stop me if you have any changes. Nope, um, go ahead. Article nine. <clears throat> we had, we had um, a case, it was the self-storage being built off of Clarkston Road, where um, in our setbacks for green belts, um, we had a list of here's what you have from uh, the width of a green belt if you're not adjacent to re residential um, and here's what you are if you're residential and actually it wasn't non-residential it actually listed everything industrial and office commercial and we actually had um, an attorney challenge it and our attorney said he's right you can't just because you left it out say that it applies so we really we had no width for that landscape re green belt necessary for any property that was adjacent that is zoned recreationally. I made the assumption that we would want it to be equal to the residential, meaning that the green belt had to be 30 feet versus being similar to um, office or commercial. Support. Yep, I do too. Okay, you'll, and you'll see that change we just discussed in all of our districts, or I'll just say ditto. We've yep. discussed it once. Yep. Um, the same with the next clause, which is getting into, we discussed it before. Um, covered trash areas, and I thought I had added title on this, and I'm not seeing, I just see covered trash area, and I'm not seeing, one moment. Yes, yeah, so that should say trash enclosures, so letter I should say trash enclosures. That is the title um, I'm using in all districts. Um, again, you can read it, basically, we were talking about the fact that it, it was, was calling it an enclosed trash areas, and, and we're, we're correcting the terms. We want the, the trash receptacle to be covered, but then you have to have the walls around it, and we had said that it had to be um, uh, brick-type, and, and there was a discussion of something similar to the materials of the building, so that is what we're proposing, something more not so stringent as long as it's in the character of the area. Yep, support. Okay, so going on to Article 11, again, ditto, adding recreationally. There were two sections that we uh, didn't mention setbacks for when we listed the district, so I added recreation. Um, letter I, trash enclosures, same thing. I just covered, carried everything over into all those districts. 
B is the same, correct? 14, I'm trying to go, Scott. No, you're Recreationally fine. and trash, you are correct, it's the same. 16, recreationally and trash. 18, okay, this one's, we can't skim through as fast. I presented this to you last time we discussed it, um, that we have a situation where we have a district called Industrial Park. And looking at the preamble, it was talking about trying to create a park-like atmosphere for, for industrial uh, buildings. But we do have a number of parcels in the township that are zoned industrial park that are, are going to be one single owner of that land. And maybe that owner would have two buildings that they own. A prime example is um, Ashley Commerce Center, um, south, southwest side of Lapeer and Silver Bell. There are two buildings there, and they are owned by the same party. Well, that is not a park. And there were restrictions in, in IP that if you were in an industrial park, you had to have a 60-foot private road that came in. Well, if they're owned by the same entity, then really it's just a drive coming in. So we created a difference that both could exist in industrial park in spite of calling it industrial park. In all instances, it's not necessarily um, from my from the notes from that meeting, I tried to decipher the many ideas that were suggested, um, but I realized that there were m much input and there might be a little bit of a tweak that you want to make on this. Yeah, so I have one proposed tweak, and <clears throat> I guess my thought here was is I like the verbiage as it stands, except for doesn't whether it's comprised of two or more parcels or a standalone parcel. Don't they all need to consist of a provision of roads, utilities, adequate setbacks, green belts, and landscaping? So meaning saying, so essentially moving the or standalone industrial users on one parcel with two or more principal buildings, move that after the first revision of comprised of two or more parcels with, you know, so moving that revision up because don't both, doesn't that, the, the statements that follow I, yeah, follow I, both of those. Can you kind of read that? I'm sorry, <clears throat> okay, so my proposed amendment would be is to strike or stand alone industrial users on one parcel with two or more principal buildings. Okay. And we're going to paste it after comprised of two or more parcels. So my amendment would be or stand alone industrial users on one parcel with two or more principal buildings with full provisions of roads, utilities, with adequate setbacks, green belt, and landscaping. This district is intended to provide locations for similar activities are permitted in limited industrial use. Okay, that'll make it very easy just to redo. rearrange. <laughs> yep, just moving it around. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so going on to Number seven on the next page, Page we change all other districts to not say churches. We made it places of worship, but we missed that one, so changing that. Um, on the next page, 18.4, um, again, we're going with the theme of calling it a subdivision slash condominium versus a park, even though the district is industrial park. That's how we're differentiating between one owner with multiple buildings versus m multiple owners in a subdivision slash condominium. So this, this was the language I came up with based on, again, the conversation. Yep. Good, okay, again, ditto on number three, recreationally. Um, number four, again, um, differentiating a neighborhood condominium and not in neighborhood condominium. Uh, page 18.5, number two, ditto on recreationally. Uh, letter J, ditto on trash enclosure. And page 18.6 is just a continuation on the, ta uh, the, the trash enclosure, and that's that district. Okay, Article 19, ditto on recreationally. Next page, I, ditto on trash enclosures, and that is that section. Article 20, ditto on trash enclosures. 21, um, this one didn't even, okay, so, so number three, we're in special purpose, which special purpose one, um, we have one special purpose one and one special purpose two in the township. The special purpose one is up on Clarkston Road, west of Baldwin, um, the farm building, 
Um, we had on PC at one point in time to turning into wedding wedding venue. So with its mm -hmm. special purpose, if you look at the uses which are not given to you, but they're, they're a, a big array. Um, and so to have that narrow of a parking or drive close proximity to an adjacent property, knowing that all the other districts we look at um, kind of say, well, if it's adjacent to residential, it should be 30. If it's not residential, it should be 20. Why would we only have 20 here? So I copied what other districts had. Support. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Um, okay, landscaping two, same thing. Why would we just say 10 feet in landscape when everything else is the, tw the 20 and 30? So I just copied other districts. I did a one trash enclosure. SP2, Article 22, did a one recreationally. Same thing on number two. We had a narrow. Why did we have it that narrow? I made it common to other, other districts. I trash enclosure just ditto. 23, Article 23, um, number 3, D2, ditto one recreationally. I ditto one trash enclosures. 24, Recreation 2, number 3, recreational ditto. 5, recreation ditto. And I ditto one trash enclosure. Um, schedule of regulations, Article 26, when we recently did a text amendment for our IC district, um, we changed the maximum height in IC to 120, but we never updated our schedule of regulations, so this is just getting that to coincide with that. Article 27, general provisions. Okay, we went real fast on, a, on that, but 27 is a mishmash of a lot, so this will take a little bit more time. Um, this does get into where we start talking about fences. Um, I'm hesitant to just read everything, but I really do think we need to discuss it. Um, so there will be a little bit of reading out loud on my part, just so we can have that discussion, or do you just want to read it and then just discuss it? Um, let's go with the latter. I know, I mean, I've read through all these, and I mean, let's, let's talk high level on a couple of them of where maybe our points are concern are, I mean, A4, I mean, kind of goes back to the double lot revisions, correct? Correct, but and this is putting in what was discussed by the fence committee and what I'm now struggling with um, is, okay, no, this is a building, not a fence, so this is not where I'm struggling. So this is, we used to just say any detached structure and it gave the setbacks. And, and a fence is a structure by the definition in the ordinance, and we want to handle fences differently than detached accessory structures. So <laughs> we incorporated taking care of that double frontage, so that's what all that one language is. <clears throat> um, on page 2711, Mr. Walker will be happy we did this. Within our charts for detached accessories, it says the square footage they can have based on acreage size, and we had, you know, one was up to a half acre, the next one started with a half acre, so what does somebody do if they're exactly half acre? So we changed that so that we didn't have the exact same numbers. And I don't see Mr. Walker celebrating. <laughs> Silent <laughs> celebration. <laughs> it set my pacemaker off camera. It did do that. Heart palpitations. Uh, 20, page 2715, um, G3 per building code, that is the size that residential addresses have to be. We can't have something different than building code, so I'm correcting that. Um, the fire protection and water supply standards, this is the verbiage we came up with when we last talked about it, which is basically talking about per adopted fire code, and that way, no matter what code we've adopted, it covers it. Uh, 2716, um, we get a number of questions on setbacks for generators. Um, it, we're in s section C, which is projections. So if somebody has a, a side yard setback of 10 feet, projection section would say, if you have a bay window, you can project two feet into that setback. If you have a fireplace, it can project two feet into that. And so the, you know, one of the questions we'd gotten was, was mostly generators. Um, there's another section that says that a generator or any mechanical equipment can't be adjacent to a, wi a habitable window, or a window in a habitable space. So it can't be adjacent to a bedroom, a living room. Um, this goes on further to say if you meet that, 
that how much can you, why would it, if my house is at 10 feet, how can I have my generator at 10 feet? So it's giving that in all yards, mechanical equipments can project five feet into whatever your required setback is. <clears throat> Um, we also discussed at the last meeting, meeting, I get questions on window wells, and just because it is below grade, um, it is it's still a question we get, and, and it's still considered a structure, so we're allowing those, per talking to the building official, to go 3.5 feet into the yard. And that can go into, the window wells can be in, um, in rear yards or side yards. Page 2736, this is where we get into the fences. <clears throat> We have two types of fences. We have a lot line fence or wall. And I keep saying fences because that's what the committee was created to work on, but walls are, are following the same criteria. Basically, if you have a four foot fence, you can be on the property line. Um, however, it does get into, um, if you're not gonna put it right on the property line, then you need to meet the setback because if you have a fence between you and your neighbor on the side and you put it on the lot line, you're able to use your weed whacker and maintain it. If you come in two feet, <clears throat> two feet's not enough to go on the other side of the fence and maintain it. So you have two choices. You take that four foot, you put it right on the property line, or you meet whatever your, your district's setback is. Um, that's basically what that is. Then we get into a privacy decorative fence or walls, which is anything taller than four feet, no taller than six feet. And, <clears throat> excuse me, we used to say that you had to meet the setbacks. So you could have suburban farms that has a side setback and you'd have to have 20 feet. I interpret it, or I suspect that the reason that it said the setbacks was for the maintenance. Well, you don't need 20 feet just because you're a suburban farms uh, zoning. 10 feet is ample. So we're saying that you need to have the 10 feet on all sides, including the rear. And if you have, if you're backing up to a road, then that 10 feet has to have some type of landscape. And I left a question mark what we'd want. This is what I started to say earlier that I put in what the fence committee discussed as I typed it up and was explaining it to staff, saying, hey, you're the ones that communicate this to citizens, does this make sense? If you visualize it, you've got a lot and you've got a, a fence at 10 feet, the Walden situation. And your neighbor will then wants a fence at 10 feet. And the next neighbor wants a fence at 10 feet. I heard the planning commission to say, and I've heard many people say, we don't want to be Fort Knox. So although we changed the ordinance to say you don't have double frontage, so you don't have to have 35 feet, we'll let you be at 10 feet, what's the difference between Fort Knox on the property line and Fort Knox coming in 10 feet? We're still creating Fort Knox by allowing it by right. Now, the one thing that makes it more pal palatable is possibly saying in that situation, you've got to have the landscape in that 10 feet. So I, I just wanted to point that out because when I first wrote it, it didn't dawn on me until I started talking to staff about it that you still end up with what we've heard we don't want in the township, which is fence after fence after fence after fence, completely surrounding. That's six feet in tall. Yeah, so let's let's talk about this one for a little bit. Um, lead some thoughts. I was in support of this 10 foot off of the rear, uh, the, the property line with, um, landscaping reason for it would be is it supports what we had kind of talked positively about in our master plan about landscaped corridors and having buffers um, I think this is a good solution to you know maybe promote the landscape buffer over the fence and if you still want the fence we're seeing the landscape buffer that we desire to see um, can I stop you for one second go ahead you're talking when it backs on a road correct Yes, so, yeah. so just saying we like a corridor, right? We are talking about down a corridor, we would love to see plantings and not understand that there's development right there, right? So I think that's what this accomplishes and it's a decent compromise of some of the, I guess, um, ins and outs of, of this topic that we've been struggling with for many, many years and, and provides us at least one solution, you know, 
that we can commit to that might might lead us in the right direction. So I have some actual text amendment stuff, but um, I guess discussion of being in support of, of the verbiage as you kind of see it, see here fit or disagreement against it. You just say Shelby landscape period mm -hmm. as opposed to with specifics. Well, so, if you're uh, backing up to a road and somebody puts a hedge that's this tall, do you not enough? still look like Fort Knox with six foot tall fences? Yeah, so the, this was my proposal. So there's two amendments that I would propose to H2. So one of which was when the, the second line item of when we start talking about the fence slash wall shall meet the same front yard setback as the principal structure, but I was changing at no time, can it be closer? I was saying, but in no instance. I think that's more of a technical or legal response. Mm -hmm. And at the end of this where there's a question mark, my proposed verbiage was, um, so on a double frontage or corner lot, the 10 foot area between the fence and the property line that abuts a road shall be landscaped with natural plantings four to six feet in height to obscure direct visibility of the fence from the right of way. Coniferous plantings are suggested but are not the sole plantings allowable. So what I mean by that would be is <clears throat> they're of some sort of height to block the majority of the fence. Mm -hmm. And I'm suggesting essentially pines or arborvitaes or something of that nature, but not saying that's the only thing we would allow. And I would be open to changing that language, but I just was, was suggest, you know, we want to have that block the visibility, right, is really why we're trying to say. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I mean, I think the height requirement is important because like you said, that it'll just be, you know, holly bushes or something like that, but if, you know, something a little higher to obstruct the fence itself. Does it need to block the entire fence? I guess that would be my next, <laughs> is it 10 arborvitaes or is it four? You know, like how much mm -hmm. of it needs yeah, to be Yeah, one covered? every three linear feet or, right, or right. There has right. to be some sort of. Yeah, the operative there. I mean, so I'm saying natural plantings four to six feet in height to obscure the direct visibility of the fence. So, so who you could determines say like that? A, At the discretion of? Right, so we could, I mean, I, I would be fine with, with putting a percentage or something like that of, of I mean, yeah. what do you think, Ms. Ross? Yeah, I don't think you could put a percentage, yeah. I don't think. I think your language is, I hate to, as a lawyer speak, ambiguous enough that it would work. Okay. I, I do think. <laughs> That's kind of the goal. I'm, I'm trying to point it in a direction, but I'm also saying it's right. not. I mean, and, and having heard, as opposed to you folks, having heard at least 500 people <laughs> demand a 10-foot fence on the property line over the last 10 years or five years or whatever it is. They, they won't move it in. They, they, even though they have the, the option of moving it in 10 feet, they don't. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to give up 10 feet of their property for this fence. So I think, I don't want to say yours isn't necessary, but yours is better because they, they won't... <clears throat> They, they they won't do that. They mm -hmm. they will not. Uh, I guess my my immediate desire would be is to address it with landscaping. Absolutely. Right. So so I think that's absolutely. what we're trying to encourage. Yes. And and to me it's like okay so if you indeed want the fence, you got to still put what our desire is first. You lose right. your ten and you put what it. our desire is. Correct. So that's how I thought of that. I mean it, it 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 is a compromise. I and it, I can hear. The zoning board saying to the next generation of people that want this, look, we t we the, the township look took into consideration all of this stuff, and here was what the compromise that we decided to to enforce, and, and it makes sense. I you can make a logical argument for that. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think we're here. I mean, I think we all encourage natural buffers, right? So if there was anything to be added, it would be that, but we're talking about the strict rules of offense, right? So I'm trying to say, here's our, our groundwork. So that was my verbiage that I came up with, so I don't know if anyone else has any thoughts. I mean, I, I, I'm okay with it being a partial you know, visibility, right? I'm okay with it seeing, you seeing part of the fence. It was more about that we're setting a priority of, of what, what's more important in this minute. And it's not the starkness of a, pardon expression, naked fence. Right. 
Yep. It, it's broken up by stuff, mm -hmm. by growing things. Okay, so I guess the question that I have that, again, I wasn't thinking of as I was typing it. So if you're not backing to a road and you set your fence, rear fence back 10 feet, I, you've got to be able to get back there. So I guess if you don't have a fence on the side, you have the ability to get back there to maintain it. I just envision um, an older neighborhood with with back-to-back -back houses that somebody puts up a six foot with the 10 on the other side. And I know it says that you're in here, you're responsible for the maintenance of it. But that 10 feet on the other side of that six foot fence is gonna be long forgotten. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're kind of specifically talking about double frontage and corner lots, but you know, I guess this points us in a better direction. Maybe it doesn't solve all of our issues, but at least we've created some options. And if we need to come back and... Well, but the problem with coming back is it's a hot issue. I mean, it well, is a very hot issue. So I think we've and opened up a can of worms. I, I, I really like what we've come up with on the double frontage. I, I do. But I think it leaves a question on by saying a fence that's six feet tall can be 10 feet from the rear lot line. And we don't say anything has to be in there because it's not backing to a road. I mean, so the only other- it's a mess. So the only other solution I foresee is if, it, if you know, a, a, a fence on the property line that was agreeable to both adjoining property owners, that would be the only other thing I could see adding this that would fix that. And then you get into the recording the document because then you have change of ownership right. and it does become. So approved. to me, I feel like this is verbiage that points us in the right direction and that it would hopefully cut down on the number of variances that we see, but it might not eliminate all of the instances in which someone would say, hey, that doesn't make sense here. So that's how I was kind of looking at it is here's a, here's a step in the right direction. It should cut back on a number of them, right? I mean, how... I mean, do we see a lot of them that are in, in a discussion of if, if it pull it back, what's going to happen behind it? That occurs occasionally, but that's not, that's not, that's the, not, that's the, not, not the driving force. The driving force is that the reason they won't do it is they don't want to give up the 10 feet of property. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what I always hear, always hear that. Okay. And the problem is if you have two fences, I mean, we've denied fences because of that very issue that you can't get back in there. It, you know, somehow this was going to create a, a one or two foot alleyway between two fences and we would say, no, you can't because who's going to be, first you can't get in there mm -hmm. and then you, who's going to decide who, whose property is that, mm -hmm. who's going to take care of that? You just can't let that go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess in general, I'm not, not in, in support of making this an easy topic. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we don't really want to see it in the first place, right? So we want to see natural buffers. We don't necessarily want to see fences when they are we create an avenue for it. So, I mean, without hearing every, the, the specific case in which we're not addressing that's been vocalized, um, I, I like what we have here as a step in the right direction. You know, in general, if we don't like fences and people want fences and we find some middle ground that we're comfortable with, they have to live with that. That's just the bottom line. Well, the goal was to cut down the number of cases going to the ZBA. And, and this, if they're not wanting to lose any, it's not going to. And if they're happy with only losing 10, then it should cut back. I mean, that was the biggest thing. It came from the CBA saying, we are getting so it. many cases in that. Anytime you get that many cases, it's supposed to come to the Planning Commission to look at a text amendment. Yep. So I think we've looked at it and we've said we're still gonna allow fences, but with compromise. Okay, we'll give that a try and... and um, and the attorney might say that you know, yeah. there's an issue. Okay. Um, so one other one yeah. other topic, item number six, Tammy. Well, I was going back to four just real quick. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Number four used to say that large acreage were excluded from all of these specifications, and we saw no reason to exclude large acreage, so we're deleting that. Um, okay, so you... Sorry, yeah, six, yeah, instead six. of saying the good side, I mean, a technical term would be the finish good. phase. Thank you. <laughs> finish phase. Got it. Um, next page, number seven, and this was a recommendation of the building official that, you know, we have fences don't require any type of building permit. And so 
how do we know that they're only doing four foot? How do we know where they're gonna put it? So we were saying that um, they would have to do a zoning compliance letter. They would come into planning and zoning with just a simple diagram. Here's my property lines, put a little X on it. We're putting our four foot fence right here. Or we're putting a six foot and I'm reflecting that I'm putting it in 10 feet here, 10 feet here. And then we sign off on it. They sign it, that's the proper re uh, reflection of what they're gonna do and it goes on record um, within our systems. Right. Moving right along, Article 29. Um, Scott, you weren't here for this, but I had brought this up at the last meeting to make sure everyone wasn't strongly opposed to it. It's been suggested that uh, Zoning Board of Appeals uh, variances are good for one year from the date they were given. Kind of with the state of things and, and the way they are, that year goes really fast. Um, and instead of having to get on a ZBA agenda, and prepare for it a month ahead of time, and it was suggested that that staff or planning and zoning director be able to issue a one-year extension um, for the first year, and then anything after that would they have would have to return to the zoning board of appeals. Yep, support. And it must be in another section. We'll get into doing the same thing with site plans. Um, Article thirty. Uh, I changed a number of places where, you know, planning and zoning used to be within building department. Um, and then, I don't know how many years now it's been that, that planning and zoning became its own department. Um, and so looking at areas that really, you know, saying that the building department determines if it's the site plan is, is an administrative review, it's not the building department, it's planning and zoning. So a number of areas I changed to planning and zoning. Um, page 30-5, number 10. Um, getting with the times, why kill trees, why incur postage? Applicants typically don't want a hard copy of their approved site plan, so we will, by ordinance, uh, provide them with an electronic set with the approval stamp. If they want to give us a paper copy and come in, we can do it, but the only commitment we have is the electric. And there's no need for it to be forwarded to the building department. They get one, but by ordinance, there's just no need. So really, it just basically is saying one copy is retained, by, uh, <clears throat> retained in the Planning Commission files. Before we flip too far, can we back up to um, 6B? Well, you're going way back. 30-4. 30-4, 6B. Yes. So my question would be is, um, is there a reason why we're not submitting to these departments electronically, actually, our outside agencies? That yes. would be a recommendation that I would make. It, it is actually within the application that they are, which ones are electronic and which ones take electronic, which ones don't. So this saying two copies, I guess, is a wrong reflection because if you're doing it electronically, there's technically not two copies, but they do. So the Road Commission and MDOT take it electronically. Water Resource takes it electronically. Health Department does, and the Utility Departments don't. Right. So we could add in there, um, please refer to the application for the proper delivery <clears throat> method. I, I would like that. I think, you know, the applicant shall be responsible to submit, you know, a physical or electronic copy to the following agencies as required or something like, you know, by that, some well, sort by of verbiage. having it in our application, referring it to our application, that That's, gives us the ability to modify our application yep, I'm whatever in support the of that. Is. This okay. is just, this is like one of those things where we're mailing in applications yep. and then they're like, why are you mailing it, you know, yep. versus emailing it. Got it. Plus, we don't always get responses back. We barely get responses back. <laughs> Okay, so page 30-6 is talking about site plan completion, and this is, again, the suggestion that, you know, you see on a regular basis me sending you cases that have hit the one-year mark. There's been no change in the text, um, you know, and, and they just can't get all the way through where they need to get to and have their building, official, their building permit within one year. So I'm suggesting that they have the one year to complete it. I'm able to look, has there been a text amendment? Has there been any change? I'm able to give them that second, um, the first extension, and then anything after that, they would have to come to the Planning Commission. Support. Uh, same page, just changing building official to Planning and Zoning Director. Support. Next page, 37, same thing. Um, page 30, 13, same third thing. Ditto. 30, 14, same Support. thing. <laughs> 3017, um, again, saying that they're going to get an electronic copy of the approval, um, completion of site design. This is on special land use that they're, I'm able to give them the extension. Support. 34, 
Um, 34, number three, ditto on recreationally, and ditto on all for trash enclosures. And the very last one, 35, ditto on trash enclosures. All right, so I would like to make a motion um, that we proceed with these amendments as discussed and proposed in tonight's meeting at the discretion of our planning and zoning director. Um, it's a motion to have support. 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 support by Mrs. Urbanowski. Um, that might mean it comes back right away or ends up being coming back in a couple of parts based on the fence discussion. Um, and I think that can be the discretion of, of Tammy and her team if uh, they see fit or what's the best fit for us and our agenda. Further discussion? Um, all those in favor, please stay with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. All right, sorry Tammy, I didn't give you anything else if you needed, <clears throat> needed any further direction. From that was it? Okay, perfect. All right, this evening, any public comments? No one's running up to the podium. We have no communication, no planner reports or education, community reports, we don't have any. Future public hearings, we don't have any. Uh, I do not have any ex chairman comments this evening. What about Mr. Bernowski? I don't have anything either. Too. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Gross. I'm clear. St. Henry. Um, I just want to provide a quick summary of a very successful event that Oakland County uh, Workforce Development uh, complete, uh, completed a couple weeks ago. Uh, for the first time in three years, uh, we held an in-person manufacturing day across the, the county. We had 765 students visit uh, 32 manufacturing facilities around Oakland County, including a couple here in Orion, um, and Lake Orion High School participated by sending a class. Uh, again, it was the first time that we had back in person since 2019. The schools were very excited to send kids back in person, um, and so was uh, so were all of the employers that participated, and, and we got strong sponsorship support to help pay for some of the, uh, the cost involved. And it was a huge success. Uh, I want to. I, have to, I just want to tip my hat to Ascent Aerospace on Indianwood. They participated, and uh, we really appreciate it, um, and we are looking forward to it again. A lot of people are asking in the community um, if we're going to be hosting uh, My Career Quest, which is a huge uh, career exploration event for high school students around the, the southeast Michigan. Just for the record, we're, going to, we're bringing it back in November of, of 2023. And the planning has already started. Thank you. Can I ask a question about that's the one with the four? The four, the uh, four quadrants. quadrants yeah. Wonderful. That's cool. Yep. That that event will will feature uh, a construction quadrant, a advanced manufacturing quadrant, a health uh, healthcare quadrant, and an information technology quadrant. We expect between six and eight thousand students in one day at the Suburban Collection Showplace. Three sessions. Uh, we typically have uh, about 125 to 150 employers between the between the four sections from all over uh, Southeast Michigan, and uh, over a thousand um, employee uh, volunteers, so to speak, uh, that work with the kids in a variety of hands-on activities to teach them about the different occupations and the skill sets needed and the education background and so forth. It's uh, pretty cool. If you have a chance, go to. Uh, um, OaklandCountyMIWorks.com and go to the Michigan Career Quest. We held two events in 2018 and 19, and because of the pandemic, we had and, and the, the size of the event and the number of students and employers we had, to, we we couldn't host those the events. But we're bringing it back in, in 23. It takes literally a year and a half to plan. Awesome. Nice. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Nothing. Mrs. Gendel. No all right, with that said, we now have 754. I make a motion to adjourn to have support. Support. All those in favor, please state with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. Thank you very much.